नमस्कार वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल दी व्यूवर इन दिस वेरी स्पेशल लाइव सेशन ऑफ सी आई टी एन सी आर टी जिसे आप देख रहे हैं ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नौ दस ग्यारह और बारह पर आप सभी का स्वागत करती हूँ मैं रेणु भट्ट अपने इस लाइव इंटरेक्शन में ये हमारे बहुत ही खास सत्र है और ये हमारी वेबिनार सीरीज है जिसका सेशन नंबर हम आपको बता दें इट्स सिक्सटी नाइन्थ सेशन एंड फ्रॉम द लास्ट पास्ट टू इयर्स हम इस वेबिनार सीरीज को कंडक्ट कर रहे हैं जिसमें हम वेरियस विभिन्न टॉपिक पर बात करते हैं जो कि बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होते हैं जिसके बारे में जानना ज़रूरी है जिसके बारे में अवेयरनेस होना ज़रूरी है आज हम किस टॉपिक पर बात कर रहे हैं वो भी हम आपको बता देते हैं आज हम बात करेंगे ऑर्गन डोनेशन एंड ट्रांसप्लांटेशन इन इंडिया यानी कि भारत में अंगदान और प्रत्यारोपण और जब हम बात करते हैं मेडिकल एडवांसमेंट की तो हम देखते हैं कि ऑर्गन डोनेशन एंड ट्रांसप्लांटेशन ये बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट हो जाते हैं जब मेडिकल एडवांसमेंट की बात होती है हम समय में आगे जा रहे हैं टेक्नोलॉजी में आगे जा रहे हैं और काफ़ी कुछ हम अचीव करते जा रहे हैं मेडिकल फील्ड में तो किस तरह की चीज़ें इससे कनेक्ट करती हैं किस किस तरह के इश्यूज इससे हो सकते हैं कौन कौन डोनेशन कर सकता है और ट्रांसप्लांटेशन में क्या क्या प्रॉब्लम्स आ सकती है ये और बहुत कुछ डेफिनेटली आपके मन में आ रहा होगा जानने के लिए और आप इसके बारे में और अधिक जानना चाहते हैं तो आप हमसे जुड़ सकते हैं हमारे इस लाइव इंटरेक्शन में अपनी सभी क्वेरीज के साथ बट बिफोर डैट लेट मी शेयर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बात की हम आपने सभी देखने वालों को बता दें कि आप हमसे जुड़े हुए हमारे चैनलों के माध्यम से ई विद्या चैनल नंबर 9, 10, 11, 12 पर एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दीज चैनल्स यू आर विद ऑन आर यूट्यूब चैनल एज वेल डैट इज़ एन सी ई आर टी इवेंट्स आप वहां पर जा सकते हैं अपनी सभी क्वेरीज अपने सभी डाउट्स अपने सभी प्रश्न हम तक पहुँचा सकते हैं आपको लाइव चैट बॉक्स में जाना है अपना कॉमेंट ड्रॉप करना है सबसे तेज़ माध्यम है हमसे जुड़ने का और हम चाहते हैं कि अपनी सभी बातों के साथ आप हमसे हमारे लाइव इंट्रैक्शन में जुड़ें आप हमें कॉल कर सकते हमारे टेलीफोन नंबर पर जो है डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन इधर यू कैन ड्रॉप अ मेल एज वेल हमारा ईमेल एड्रेस है डी टी एच डॉट क्लास सिक्स एट द रेट क्लास नाइन एट द रेट सी आई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन नौ के अलावा आप दस ग्यारह और बारह भी यूज कर सकते हैं इन ई मेल एड्रेस पर आप अपनी बात हम तक पहुँचा सकते हैं अगर आप अपना फीडबैक हम तक पहुँचाएंगे तो हमें बहुत अच्छा लगेगा कि ये वेबिनार सीरीज आपको कैसी लगती है और क्या प्रतिक्रिया आप देना चाहते हैं और अब समय है कि हम अपने एक्सपर्ट से मिल लें हमारे एस्टीम्ड एक्सपर्ट हमारे साथ जुड़ चुके हैं तो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले लेट्स क्विकली मीट हिम आप हैं डॉक्टर विनियेंद्र पामेचा सर आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है सर के बारे में हम बता दें कि सर हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हैप्टो पैंक्रियाटो बिलियरी सर्जरी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ लीवर एंड बालियरी साइंसेज न्यू दिल्ली से हैं और हमारे साथ हैं डॉक्टर गगन गुप्ता आप डी ई से सर आपको बहुत बहुत स्वागत है नमस्कार और सर जैसे हमने अपने सभी देखने वालों को बताया कि हम ऑर्गन डोनेशन और ट्रांसप्लांटेशन पे बात कर रहे हैं एंड व्हेन इट्स कम टू ऑर्गन डोनेशन एंड ट्रांसप्लांटेशन ये बहुत ज़रूरी हो जाता है इसके बारे में कुछ बातें हैं मिथ्स हैं कई बातें हैं जो लोगों को जानना ज़रूरी है तो हम आपके पास आएंगे और आपसे इस सेशन की वेबिनार की शुरुआत करना चाहेंगे सर नमस्कार दोस्तों सादर प्रणाम और रेनू थैंक यू वेरी मच टूडे फ्रेंड्स अगस्त 2021 से शुरू करके आज हम लगभग ढाई साल हो चुके हैं आज दिल्ली का मौसम थोड़ा ठंडा है और इस समय लगभग 11 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड टेम्परेचर है और आज का मिनिमम टेम्परेचर रफली 7 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड ठंड दिल्ली में ठंड है और आज हम एक बड़े वार विषय पर बात करने वाले हैं कंट्रेरी टू दैट वेदर टुडे और बहुत ही ज़रूरी विषय है इस पर आज हम बात करने वाले हैं दोस्तों आपको मालूम है कि हमने मेडिसिन साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी सोसाइटी अलग अलग विषयों पर इस टॉपिक पर बात की है सारे के सारे सेशन 69 सेशन आज है ऑल द 69 सेशंस आर बीन अपलोडेड ऑन आवर वेबसाइट www.ncrt.nic.in एंड यू कैन गो टू इट्स इवेंट सेक्शन एंड देयर यू विल फाइंड ऑल द सेशंस ऑन इट प्लीज कीप ऑन टेलिंग अस योर सजेशंस अबाउट द टॉपिक्स विच वी शुड विच वी शुड टेक ऑन दिस फोरम your know, friends let me tell you that very soon we are going to have sessions on millets we are going to have sessions on computer programming evolution of computer programming and a very charming se session again we are going to have on isros isros uh, 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 speaking speaking issues and speaking uh, missions uh, nandini will be with us uh, on 2nd of february before that we will be uh, bharti kakar from indian institute of geomagnetism will be with us on 19th of january next week and she will be talking about the magnetic reversals etc and soon we are going to have a topic uh, session on fusion batteries 
fusion batteries is a kind of a phenomena which we are envisaging nowadays and uh, as it is going to be an ultimate source of energy for our uh, vehicles our mobile phones if you have a mobile phone let me just tell you that if you have a mobile phone with uh, coupled with a fusion battery and uh, you will not be required to have a charge again whether it is laptop or vehicles etc etc anything activated material will be embedded in this capsule and that capsule will be embedded in your vehicles and that uh, and that will that session will again be a person who is who has been marked by the outlook as uh, the first uh, the fifth visionary in the india to take our uh, nation into 5 dollar 5 trillion dollar economy so we are with you please keep on suggesting us your topics so today we are um, with, uh, with uh, professor my friend professor vinayendra pamecha we have been known to each other since last 12 years or so uh, in fact uh, he was a surgeon uh, for my mother's treatment at uh, Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences and for a long we were wanting to have him here. We are fortunate that we are able to get him ultimately today. He is a very busy man, very busy person and he has done nearly 1,200 uh, 1, liver transplants etc. So, Dr. Pamicha, my friend please you are most welcome here. So, we are we are thankful to Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences New Delhi for having a collaboration with the National Council of Educational Research and Training and in particular with the Department of Education in Science and Mathematics here at NCERT sir. So, we welcome you the whole nation welcomes you the whole nation wants to listen to you today. Before uh, I give it to Dr. Pamecha uh, let me introduce Dr. Pamecha with you in brief. Uh, Dr. Pamecha presently had Department of Liver Transplant and Hepatopanocarato Biliary Surgery and he is also the Associate Dean Ideation, Innovation and Entrepreneurship and Dr. Reddy Endowment Chair for Professor in Liver Transplantation at the Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences New Delhi. Dr. Pamecha is Masters in Surgery from Udaipur obtained his membership of the Royal College of Surgeons MRCS from the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh fellowships in multi organ retrieval liver transplantation and hepato biliary and pancreatic surgery from the European Board of Surgery United Kingdom. Dr. Vinendra has, has been the first Indian has been the first Indian friends to receive the prestigious fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons uh, commonly known as FRCS in hepato pancreato biliary and upper GI surgery from the intercollegiate specialty board United Kingdom. Uh, uh, we are very lucky to have we started this program with another GI surgeon uh, GI uh, Gagandeep Kang in this forum uh, way back in February 2021. So, again we are going to have another GI surgeon today with us. Um, after completing these specialized programs in surgery Dr. Pamecha joined the ILBS in 2010. Uh, over his 28 years of his clinical academic and teaching experience Dr. Vinayan has performed in more than 1500 liver transplants, 1200 liver resections and 300 pancreatic resections. Very distinguished fellow with us today. He has had nearly 120 scientific publications to his credit in internationally peer reviewed journals and that have nearly 3500 citations so far. He has also written two three book chapters. Dr. Pamecha, a great teacher, a great motivator, indeed a great surgeon, is also known to have started the ma and mentored the liver transplantation programs in many medical institutions in India, including Jipmer, uh, Savai Madhu Singh Hospital, Jaipur, uh, Ames, Jodhpur, etc. He is also associated with the several national and international bodies involved in the area of health and organ transplantation. So, once again, Dr. Pamecha, welcome to the, our studios here. Uh, we again thank Institute of Liver uh, and Biliary Sciences, New Delhi, for having collaborated with us for this program. It's all yours now, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. It's really an honor to be here, and uh, I thank NCRT and uh, Dr. Gupta for having me here. Uh, so, what I'm going to do over the next 30 minutes or so is going to talk about uh, just give you a broad view about organ donation and transplantation, how important it is for the country and how, how important it is about saving lives. So, I will just start with a with a story of this young girl. So, this is her recent photographs and uh, she, she came to us about 10 years ago when she was about 18 years in age 
and she was suffering for uh, almost uh, three, four years with uh, liver problem. She had recurrent hospital admission and a point has come where she has been in hospital for a very long time and uh, her only option to survive or have a long life or good quality of life was to have a liver transplantation. And uh, this, so she, this was a very difficult time for the family as well and uh, because of uh, so much you know recurrent hospital admission lot of finances also involved in those processes and loss of uh, work and all those things involved. And then she was lucky that uh, this lady who, who actually unfortunately had a uh, brain stroke and uh, she was declared brain death and the family of that this particular lady Uma Chopra they actually decided to donate her organs. Uh, uh, after she was declared brain dead and this, uh, this particular girl actually received those organs, she received the liver and her life could be saved and now she is 10 years from her transplantation and she is now married and maybe in near future she is going to have children as well and she is working as well and has become, has got a productive life for the society and the nation as well. So that is just to give you a brief about how organ transplantation actually changes life and uh, can actually make a big difference in what the health services are presently offer. So my, my gist of my talk is about life and death and uh, in a way it is about how you can keep how you can keep living even after death because death is a reality for every one of us and uh, how we can actually keep going even after death and that is where my, most of my gist of this particular talk is going to be. So in terms of organ transplantation actually it is not new actually the concept actually has been there for a very long time and I am sure you all know the story of uh, how Lord Ganesha. Uh, was beheaded and then he had he had a uh, head implantation done by Lord Shiva and uh, we all actually you know how we all love God, Lord Ganesha. So I would have thought that in if we take Asian times he is the first example of an uh, organ transplantation being done and that that all comes from our civilization as well. Then as a surgeon I always want to like to mention about um, Maharishi Shushrata. Uh, just because most of the organ transplantation involve operations, big operation and uh, you know very, very few people actually know Maharishi Shushrat was the, is considered to be father of surgery. About 2500 years, 3000 years ago he, he developed lot of surgical procedures and some of this procedure actually goes down where again transplantation techniques are also embedded into it. So he, he did surgeries for nasal damage and which, which actually included some auto transplantation techniques as well. And so as an, as an Indian we need to know all this uh, that we have been doing all this for a long time before, before actually the West uh, actually woke up to all these things. He developed lot of instruments as well which are still the basic principles of those instruments are still in, in, in use and uh, the modern instruments have been developed on, on those basic concept of those surgical instruments as well. So moving on to basics of our talk today, organ transplant. So why, why we are talking about this? Hum, hum if we see about 5 lakh people actually die every year because of end organ failure. So once their organ get damaged to extent like kidneys, livers, lungs, heart, the only chance of them to live longer is if they can get a new organ. And if we take this a rough estimate that 5 lakh people actually lives can be saved every year by if they get a timely transplantation. And uh, so that is the current need. Again this is, this is rough because we do not have that much registry data at this stage to say exact figures but uh, this and the, and this figures may be much higher as well. So if we say uh, you know the number of organs needed, so we need about 50,000 heart, about 100,000 livers, 200,000 kidneys, 50,000 intestine, 20,000 lungs and about 10 lakh eyes as well that is cornea transplantation. So that is a huge number of patients actually who can benefit from timely organ transplantation and that is the need uh, which the currently country has. And in terms of what we are doing, 
So, we are way behind in terms of organ donation if we compare ourselves to other countries like Spain, US and Britain the organ donation rate in India is currently only 0.5 per million population. If we compare with Spain which has got the highest organ donation rate it is about 36 there. So, we are lagging behind in terms of uh, how, how we can improve our health services and how many more patients actually can benefit from this particular modality of treatment. So, on moving on in terms of understanding what organ donation and exactly means. So, there are two types of donation when we come to the uh, what a particular person can donate. It can be an organ donation, it can be tissue donation. So, tissue donation is like you donate skin, bones and uh, parts of uh, other parts of your body which, you can, which can be used for another person. So, this donations are mainly you know patients who have died for, uh, for a long time and then they can donate all those tissues and those tissues can be banked and can be used. But these are not really life saving things. Life saving is when you donate an organ which is like heart, kidney, lungs, liver, pancreas and all. So, that actually saves your life and improves the quality of life as well. So, this basic need to be understand that and then organ donation can happen only when organs are viable. I will just explain to you in next few slides what, what we mean about viability of those, those organs as well. Uh, so, what organs can be donated as I said before? You can donate kidney, liver, pancreas, lungs, heart, intestine, eye corneas and hand as well. And so, there, there can be two types of donor. One you can donate certain things when you are alive and one and the other one is when you when you have actually died then you can donate those things as well. So, live donation is mainly limited to kidney because we have two kidneys. So, you can donate one kidney to your near and dear ones and you can save their life or you can donate a part of your liver because liver has the capacity to regenerate, it can regrow. So, if you can donate a part of your liver to your near and dear, they can again save. Again, the technologies have now increased and we are moving forward in terms of even parts of pancreas, intestine from a live donor have been taken. So, these are people who are near and dear to the patient and they out of, uh, out of emotional attachment they donate parts of their organs to save the life of their near dears. The other part is donation after death. Basically, there you, you, you are declared death and then you donate organs and then, the, then you can save many lives as well. We will come to that in details later on. Okay. So, Live donation again this is just I have put in up a you know there are lots of photographs here and this are basically most of them are patients who's, who, uh, who had live donor liver transplantation. So, you see there are lots of kids in this in this particular uh, collage and uh, these are kids who have received uh, their uh, organs livers from uh, their mothers, fathers or siblings. And that's how they they had a their lives could be saved and they had a long life as well. Okay, so live donation is mainly either brother sister donates uh, to each other or uh, wife donates to husband or husband donate to a wife or uh, or uh, um, parents donating to their children. So there is an extensive evaluation which is done. And uh, there is a lot of legal process involved into this authorization as well that who can donate and who can't donate in terms of live donation. But the the problem in live donation is there is always a risk of that operation. And the second thing is there are only limited number of pe people who can donate parts of their organs. So there is a very limited uh, extent of patient who can benefit. And obviously most of this. Uh, live liver tra live transplants happen within a family or within the close relatives as well. So, it, it does not really benefit to the larger extent of the society and that is what actually is the is the limitation currently being faced in the country that the, the this part of is very limited to that group of patients actually. So, when we come to donation after death. So, you can save 8 lives as I said by the all the organs which can be retrieved and can be used. So, one donor actually can save 8 lives by donating 
their organs. So, what do we mean by donation after death? So, there are two concepts here which we need to understand carefully. One is donation after brain death and donation after cardiac death. So, donation after brain death is that some, when someone has uh, sustained an injury to the brain which is uh, which leads to irreversible changes. Okay? So, like just uh, if you can imagine there is a road traffic accident and somebody had a head injury and a bleed into their brain and it has caused irreversible damage to the brain, then they actually develop brain stem death. And this is actually tested uh, once they are in the ICU, then proper testing is done in terms of uh, whether they are brain stem death or not. And if that brain stem death declaration is done, then they can decide whether to donate the, uh, the family can decide actually whether they want to go ahead and donate the organs or not. So, that is about brain death and it is a medical death because this in this condition the heart and lungs will be still heart will be functioning, but they will be supported by the artificial support. So, if we take that off support off then they, they would not live long actually. So, there is an irreversible damage to the brain which is not uh, sustainable with the life. Okay. In terms of donation after cardiac death, which means that your heart has stopped and the death has been declared, again you can donate organs in those situations as well. But if this is a long time, like supposing if somebody has died 2 hours ago, the heart has stopped and then you want to donate organ, then, then those organs are not viable and they cannot be used actually. So, most of this situation is when a patient is in ICU, they have actually had, uh, had damage to their brain, but their heart is still working, but most of the other organs have also started having an effect as well. So, in that situation, the medical team actually uh, had a can have a discussion with the family that continuing treatment in this situation is not going to uh, prolong the life. And if the relatives decide, then what is done is the treatment is withdrawn and within, within a very uh, narrow time space like 30 minutes or so, again the organs are retrieved and used. So, it is all done in a controlled situation so that the organs which we can get is viable and they can be used for transplantation. So, these are two important concepts which, which we need to understand in terms of how they are implicated in transplantation. Again, I will emphasize one more point, both this brain death and cardiac death are legal and medically certified deaths actually. So, in a way they are not completely related to transplantation, transplantation is actually second part. After this is done, then the relatives decide that they want to donate organ and that is why the, the donation happen. Okay? So, this is again just to explain or make it clear about what is the concept of brain death. So, you can see this is in, so this brain death is not exactly coma because in coma still the vascularity of your brain is functioning and there, there will be brain function there. But in brain death, these are blood vessels which are supplying to the brain and then in brain death actually there is irreversible damage to the brain. So, in this situation heart, liver, lungs and other organs will be working, but they are maintained on an artificial support and uh, but the, all the electrical activity in the brain will be, stop, will be stopped and patient would not be able to breathe spontaneously. So, if we take them off the ventilator, they would not be able to breathe for, for long and, uh, and that is how the brain stem declaration. So, this are done by a separate team which is not involved in transplantation. So, those doctors have got nothing to do with organ transplantation, there is a separate team, there are legally legal framework of how it is done. So, there are four doctors who certify brain stem death and once that certification is done, then the relatives are asked that whether they want to donate organs, if they want to donate organs, then the organ transplantation uh, process is uh, actually started. Okay? So, this is just the apnea test which I just mentioned that if you take them off the ventilator then they would not be able. So, you need some normal uh, what should be the uh, norm in order to do an apnea test. I would not go into details of this. Uh, so, all this is actually governed by an act 
which has been passed in the parliament in 1994, which is called as the transplantation of human organs and tissue rules and it has been modified in 2014 as well. So, uh, this is all actually works in a legal framework, it is not like something that there is a patient in the in the hospital and somebody you know it been declared brain death and then it does not happen that way. There is there is a legal good legal framework to work in within the uh, within that framework all these things are done. Okay. So, who, who needs an organ? So, just to emphasize that you know the way which uh, we the uh, anybody who develops an, an organ failure will need the, his, his treatment or his life can be prolonged only by having an organ, organ transplantation. So, in liver you know uh, they can have acute liver failure, chronic liver diseases, genetic diseases which can cause damage to the liver and which can lead to liver failure and then after you know to a certain extent the medicines can help to them, but if they have to have a sustained long life then they may need a liver transplantation. Same applies to lungs as well, same applies to heart as well and same applies to kidneys as well. Okay. So, these are all there are established criterias about when an organ transplantation should be done, there are guidelines about that what if a patient meets those certain criteria then only the transplantation is offered to them and then transplantation happen to them. So, currently in our country all this is looked after by NOTO that is National Organ and Tissue Transplant Organization under Government of India. So, they actually lay down the framework of uh, and guidelines about organ how, how organs can be retrieved and how organ transplantation can happen in the country. And uh, they have been doing, doing very good work and especially in the last 10 years or so they have been lot of activities and the organ donation pledges have increased and uh, the transplantation numbers have also increased in the country in last 10 years as well. <coughs> so, just to brief you about the process of disease donor transplantation, disease donor transplantation again is I will just re-emphasize the word that is donation after death. Okay. So, the way it work is you need to have an awareness within the public about uh, how what does uh, wh how why it is important to donate organs and also the concept of brain death and cardiac death has to be has to be understood by the public. And there has been lot of uh, lot of activity from government of India. One of the things which happen in many states is nowadays at the time of driving license a, a special form is given where people can express their willingness if they want to donate organs uh, if a mishap happens to them. And in, in some of the states actually when you have the license card there is actually an uh, an dot about organ transplantation or organ donation there as well. So, there have been lot of uh, awarenesses program which has been run by government of India and uh, I am sure. Uh, I am sure you are aware this has come from Ministry of Health as well and our Prime Minister has also emphasized in recent past about how organ donation need to need to increase in the country. So, if we are when we uh, apart from awareness obviously you need to have brain stem declaration done in the hospital and then the families need to be consoled about whether they can donate when they want to donate the organs of their near and dear ones and then the organ retrieval happen and organs are allocated. Uh, this is decided by NOTO that who is going to get what uh, organs and then organ transport happens if this is if organs are coming from a distant hospital and then the transplant happen. So, as I said there have been lot of activity happening in India we ourselves actually because organ transplantation currently is limited to limited to uh, metro cities although second tier and third tier cities are also doing it. But because of the uh, limitations of uh, uh, infrastructure and all it is not happening regularly. So, many a times actually uh, we, we go out to distant cities and get the organs from there. So, we have been out to Jaipur, Indore, Lucknow and other cities to get the organs from there and bring in. So, 
the point here to emphasize is because organs have a limited viability in terms of how long we can keep them. So, once we retrieve organ we have to preserve the organ in a special solutions and on an ice actually and they have a limited viability period. So, like liver will have 8 to 12 hours of viability, kidneys may go up to 24 hours, heart is about 4 to 6 hours, lungs again 4 to 6 hours. So, you can understand the time which is you know it is a very tight time that when after retrieving the organ we have to get that organ into the hospital and again do the operation and do the transplantation. So, it is a race against time for those organs to be used in a in a proper way and uh, that is where there lot of logistics comes into play as well that how rapidly we can get the organs into the into our hospital and uh, and do the transplantation. But there have been lot of movement actually across the country and uh, because of the availability the currently you know the air 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 facilities the way with they have they have increased in the country. So, it is become very easy for us to go even just on a commercial flight and go in the evening do the organ uh, retrieval in the late hours of night and then come back in the f as a first flight from next day and we can do the do the transplantation. So, you know it is like um, uh, these are heroic efforts, but they, they, they are very successful in terms of saving saving lives. So, just, just to put you an example here this is actually way back uh, 2016 I think we we had an offer coming from there was a donor in Indore in one of the hospitals in Indore and the family decided to donate organs. So, they, they decided to donate kidneys, heart, lung and liver. So, the liver was coming to us in Delhi, we went for the liver to Indore and the heart went to Bombay. So, this was actually offered midday around to us and then we went to Indore in the late evening flight, we retrieved the organ in the in the early hours of the morning and then we came back by first flight in the morning back to Delhi and completed the transplant by 4 pm. So, you can just see 1.30 the offer came and then by 4 o'clock next day we were done with the liver transplantation. So, same was the story here when, in, 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 uh, when the heart went to um, Bombay as well. Okay. So, there is lot of help from uh, all the administration currently in terms of creating green corridors, uh, you are all aware there is lot of traffic into, into the cities nowadays and the police and administration and the airport transport actually helps us bring this organ quickly into the, into the, into the hospital. So, these are green corridors which have become a very norm nowadays whenever there is an, there is an organ donation happening. Okay. So, I am just going to address uh, some of the myths about the donation. Uh, one of the one of the common myth which we have found is like organ donation is against my faith or religion, but uh, if you look at closely most major faith accept organ donation and this includes Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Sikhism, Jainism and most religion actually favors it. And uh, <coughs> I'll just go through some of them. Uh, like in Hinduism, we all know the karma plays the biggest part, and uh, the rebirth is uh, we the concept of rebirth is known, and it depends on how your karmas are. Okay, but the basic thing in Bhagavad Gita is as a person puts on new garments, giving up the old ones, the soul similarly accept new material material bodies giving up the old one and useless one. So, it clearly says that the body material will just stay here on earth, it does not go and the soul moves on. Okay. So, once you are dead then those organs are of no use to you and they can be actually used for other people to save life and give them um, give them new life actually. <coughs> so, that is about Hinduism. And uh, this has been emphasized because Daan is uh, considered to be the biggest uh, uh, charity one can do. Of all the things that that it that it is possible to donate to donate your body own body is infinity infinitely more worthwhile. So that's uh, Daan is considered to be the biggest uh, gift you can give or biggest charity you can do. 
So, same applies to Sikhism as well that uh, where self exists there is no God, where God exists there is no self and then Guru Guru Gan Sahib says thou selfless uh, service through selfless service eternal peace is obtained, the Guru Mukhi is absorbed in intuitive peace. So, you know and uh, the most selfless service will be to help someone else and uh, to give away your organs when you are dead, there cannot be anything more supreme than that. Okay. Then same applies to Islam as well, it, the Quran says whoever saves a life it would be as if he saved the life of all mankind. So, again there is no nothing to say that organ donation is against any religion. Again coming to Christianity in eternity we will never have nor need our earthly bodies, former things will pass away, all things will be made new. So, again Christianity also says that once you are dead the body goes away. So, there is no point in hanging on and there is no, there is no hindrance in terms of organ donation from any, any faith or religion actually. Okay. Then uh, people think I am too old to donate, nobody wants my organ, that is not right. Okay. There is no standard cut off age where uh, one can say, uh, so it is more of a medical decision whether on that particular age or other, other organs, other functions of the body are uh, how they are, then that is how we decide uh, whether the organs can be donated and used. Okay. So, this is our own recently, this is just last, uh, last month, uh, last, last year and last month. So, this was a 10 year old uh, baby in Chandigarh whose, whose parents uh, unfortunately had a an head injury and sustained irreversible brain damage and the parents decided to donate organs and uh, so the liver actually came to us, um, we went there to Chandigarh and got the liver and we transplanted in a 14 month old baby and uh, she is doing well. And again uh, this is just a few weeks ago, there was a 78 year old lady here in Ames, Delhi. The, the family, she had a brain stroke uh, and uh, family decided to donate organ and we used it and uh, the, the person who got it is doing well as well. So, there is no age barrier in terms of uh, who can donate organs. Okay. Uh, I am not in best health, this is again people think that I myself is unwell, how I can, how I am going to donate organs uh, when I die. So, there are very few medical conditions actually who which can actually uh, contraindicate a donation and, uh, and this is best left to the doctors to decide whether the organs can be used or not, but as such it is not a contraindication to donate organs. Okay. Uh, this is again uh, people think that the rich and famous will uh, will be on the top of the list and um, they will get transplanted rather than the poor. Again this is not right. So, the list waiting list for organ transplantation is maintained by the hospital and the priorities are decided based on criteria. So, it is not like somebody who has got more money is going to get uh, uh, organ transplant before a poor one. It just happens that people who are, who are famous and rich, they when they have an operation like this, there is a lot of media coverage to them and that is why people have this type of feeling that maybe that is the way it is, but it, it does not really happen. Uh, there is no this one that um, a poor would not get a transplant and a rich will only rich will get a transplant. So, that, that does not apply. Okay. Then, um, my family will be charged if I donate my organs. The, the not nobody is charged extra for donating organs. Actually, there are provision now from government of India to help people who decide to donate organs, and uh, so they they are uh, benefits given in terms of uh, performing last rites as well. And uh, if uh, there are certain amount of uh, support is also given once the family decide uh, they want to donate organs. So, this is, uh, this is a wrong concept that they will be charged if they want to donate organs. Actually, the way it is that uh, uh, 
there is a push from government that we should support people and uh, family who want to donate organs as well okay <coughs> uh living donation will affect my future life so as i said living donation is mostly limited to kidney and uh, part of liver and most living donors actually do well in the long term they are uh, although there is a big operation there is a risk of the operation is there but most because there is an extensive evaluation done in order to make sure they are fit enough to donate and uh, most donors actually do well in the long term as well okay so this is again the website to register for an organ donor if someone want to become an organ donor they can just go to noto website there is a big campaign going on last year has been particularly very good the pledges have increased uh, uh, as far as i am remember i think the pledge has gone more than 1 lakh in last year or so uh, which has been a, like a sort of boon to the noto uh high numbers have pledged last year uh for organ donation and there a lot of campaign going on across the country in order to for people to donate organs and register themselves for what registration helps is it is basically you know you, why this is important the point is when you are brain death or you come to you are about, you know you decide after cardiac arrest so what happens is you are in icu and uh, you are not in a position to make any decision because you are brain dead so the decision is now left to the family now as a family member it is a very difficult decision to make because you know you, you can just imagine uh, somebody young who had a road traffic accident and sustained a brain injury right now for family to decide that to for organ donation and to accept brain death is is not that easy actually but if you register yourself beforehand and you express your wish that if you are in that situation if you wanted to do it so it is then becomes for the family it becomes like this was the last wish of that person okay so if somebody carries a donor card then uh, it becomes easy for family to decide that okay this was the last wish of this Uh, you know my son my daughter or my parents and so it becomes much easier for them to come to that decision so that is why registration and organ donor card having an organ donor card becomes important okay so it is going to play okay so this is just a small video of um, um patients who had organ transplant done okay and this is all all girls actually women power here and uh, they all received uh, livers uh, and uh, from uh, from patient who had who became brain dead so you can see there are various ages the some of them are very young some of them are very old as well and uh, and uh, because they are alive today because somebody decided to donate organs and uh, you can see how they good their quality of life is from those video actually okay so there is no greater gift than the gift of life again i'm going to come to the end of the stock where i'm just showing this picture this girl she worked for uh, tata consultancy and uh, she she was in a very bad shape she was wheelchair bound actually she couldn't walk because her bones have gone so weak because of liver failure and uh, she was uh, almost always most of her time was being spent in the hospital she was well, luckily she got an organ this was a liver which came from indore and she got transplanted about 5 uh, years ago and uh, she now went on to have another baby as well so this picture is actually about 3 years ago so after transplant she had a baby as well and uh, you can see how happy they are and this was girl actually who now actively working in tata consultancy and have active contribution to the society so that's how you know organ transplantation can change lives and um, nothing can happen without a team so you need a huge team to do all this and that's where you know as a student if um, the way medical science is progressing the way technologies are coming in 
there is a huge uh, career options in terms of looking into it you know organ transplant actually is going to ha come in a very big way in next 10 20 years in the country and uh, the science is going to evolve a lot actually in, in this particular area. So, there are lot of interest. So, it is not just about an operation, there are lots of things which happen around the operation. So, there are, there are lots of cellular things, immunological things which, which are involved into this. Uh, uh, so, there is a lot of science which, which is evolving here. So, so, one of this option either you can bin your organs after death or you can save someone's life. And uh, Dr. Gupta wanted me to emphasize on this. So, I will just show that how medical technologies are evolving. This is how a liver looks like inside the body. Okay. So, that is the whole liver actually looks like. And, uh, the way we now understand liver, liver has got uh, various segments and parts. So, how technology because we understand the anatomy of the liver and then the technology wise how technology has become advanced and how our understanding of science has become. So, now we can partition this liver into two. So, this is a whole liver. So, we divided this into two parts okay. and then one part can be given to, to another another to the patient to save his life. So, this is this is you know about 30, 40 years somebody would have thought you know, this is impossible and this has now become routine and uh, norm of the day this operation has become. So, this involves a lot of understanding into how organs work and then it involves a lot of skills in terms of doing this type of operations as well. And now we, we have evolved even to use small liver. This is my hand actually the back of my you see the white color the, there is a glow on my hand. And that is the part of the liver. So, you can see as small as that which is which can be used for the small kids in order to. So, this has been donated by their mother to save their life and then again we can actually cut down liver to more smaller segments in order to use them for smaller babies like this. Okay. And again we can cut down even to more smaller segments. So, this is hardly about 4 into 4 centimeter um, size of liver. Uh, and this has been used for this small baby as well. Okay. So, I think that is where I will just stop. I have taken my time. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I hope it was, it, it was good and uh, it would uh, excite people into this area and also people will consider organ donation being part of their life. But as a student, I would have thought uh, there, there is a lot happening in this area. And uh, these are very good career options. The science here is evolving like uh, very rapidly and uh, these are good career options to come, come to. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Pamecha. Uh, I really enjoyed. There are many questions which I am receiving through the different forums. Uh, okay. That I will come to that slowly, slowly, one by one. There are many questions. The one um, quick question um, uh, here is uh, where you ended uh, that uh, uh, the size of the organ. Can we come to the slide number 43? Uh, uh, yes, yes, sir, this is the slide. Uh, for that, yes, yes, sir, this is the slide. No, 43. Next. Yes, this is the slide. Here, uh, see, you talked about uh, taking organs after the death, brain death, but mostly in the case of the liver transplantations or kidney transplantations most of the donations to my understanding comes from the persons or the siblings those who are still alive mm -hmm. so number one whether the size of the organ depend which are being which has to be taken out from the uh, donor's body depends on the age or the physical fitness of the person where the person where the organ is to be donated and which portion of this liver in particular in this liver there are eight segments shown are uh, preferred to have or what are the factors. Okay. So, again just to re-emphasize the two type of donation one is live donation and another is donation after death. <coughs> so, live donation obviously you are going to donate a part of your organ. So, in kidneys because you have two kidneys so one kidneys can be donated and liver the organ is one actually. And we have to divide this liver into various halves to decide 
which part we can give to a recipient. So, we do lot of calculations, lot of actually you know uh, in terms of uh, restructuring and of the liver. Uh, we look at the anatomy, how the anatomy is, how much uh, uh, grams of liver is going to come out from, from the donor and what is the need of the recipient. So, there is lot of calculation which is done. Okay. So, in like if pediatric means if it is going to a children then only they need only a small segment. Okay. But if it is somebody adult. is adult to adult somebody then they will need a larger portion of the liver. Okay. So, it can be a right lobe of the liver or a left lobe of the liver. So, we do a calculation there are various formulas and then we decide that which is safer for the donor as well and which is going to work for the recipient as well. Okay, so this depends. This calculation depends on Lots several factors. factors several yeah, factors. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the depend of the the age of the sibling, the physical fitness of the sibling. You talked about. Uh, I know that you have been an instrumental in, uh, uh, in matching uh, or in having the transplantations before where the blood group doesn't match. How yeah. important uh, uh, the blood group matching is in this whole process? Yes. So, this is actually you know because uh, no, nowadays what happens you have smaller families and there, there will be occasions when the groups of the donor and recipient is not matching. So, what we do is we actually look at how much is the how big is the mismatch like you have blood groups it is same it runs on the same thing. So, supposing somebody's group is A and the donor's group is B. So, they will the A group will have antibodies against B. So, we look at what is the titer of those antibodies and then depending on this titer and also about the fitness of the one who is going to have this operation recipient, we decide whether they, we can do a mismatch or not, mismatch transplant or not. Okay. Then they will need special types of medication. So, we actually give them special medication and also we actually clear their plasma as well with antibodies. Oh. All the antibodies are cleared before the, before the transplant and then we do the transplant. So, this is the results are now good as good as ABO compatible transplant, but again this can be only done for a limited group of patients. So, it can be it cannot be applied into a generalization that uh, anybody uh, can have. It is still case by case. case, so, by uh, case. I mean one question asked which I left for um, Renu to ask, but let me uh, uh, ask this question in continuation. <coughs> See this I understand this require you have very limited time with us. With you when it is this transplantation is to be made particularly in the case of the dead brain dead people or from the cadaver organs you have very limited time you are very tight. So, how do you feel this this machine language the developments in the machine language and artificial intelligence in the area of medicines yeah. can really help you so that yeah. people where the organs are being donated uh, they can have good life. Yeah. So, as I said the science is evolving in this area there are lot of exciting things happening. So, nowadays machines have become available. So, what we can do is we can put the organ on the machine okay, and uh, which can prolong the cold ischemia time. Cold ischemia time is called as the time which the organ is going to spend on ice. So, once we retrieve we have to put the organ onto ice in order to preserve it. So, the machines can actually prolong that time. Oh, I see. Okay. So, also machine now the newer development in the machines is that some of the machines come with where we can actually assess the function of the organ while it is being preserved. So, then we can decide whether it is worth using those organs or not to. So, so this are this are available now actually, but obviously cost is an hindrance this are because uh, they are very costly machines, but now I am sure you know as we Based have come, yes. there will be an Indian solution to there it will, yes, yes. and uh, people are in the process of developing uh, you know trying Alternate to develop uh, uh -huh, or develop machine indigenous machine in order. So, I think why we are because currently what is happening is the emphasis in our country is on organ donations. If the rate of donation increases if we are going to have more of this then the needs of machine and all other in yes. innovation will happen actually. Yes. आपने सपनों की बात कर रहे हैं डॉक्टर साहब मैं सपनों की हमें तो साइंस का स्टूडेंट हूं पर्टिकुलरली फिजिक्स का आपको याद है करें शुरू में ही मैंने फ्यूजन बैटरीज की बात की जिसमें सपने देखने की बात की और मुझे मैं समझता हूं कि विद इन माय लाइफ टाइम आई विल बी एबल टू सी दोस काइंड ऑफ बैटरीज सिमिलरली एनालॉगस टू इट हम मेडिसिन में भी सपने देखते हैं मेडिसिन में सपने जरा ज्यादा देखते हैं हम लोग कैन वी हैव आर्टिफिशियल लीवर्स ऑर्गन्स सम टाइम सो देयर देयर बीन 
uh, again as I said there is a lot of exciting things and science and technology the way it is uh, developing now. So, there are lot of uh, areas where actually bio artificial liver development is happening. People have started developing uh, 3D printing in terms of uh, developing tissues right now. But we uh, still it is in infancy in terms of developing an organ. So, that is where it is going to be when you start saying by artificial thing then it is about 3D printing art, using artificial intelligence in order to print organs and then use those organs. So, currently we are just come to having tissues being developed. We have not yet reached where we can develop actual organs. organs okay. Okay. Then the other area is about stem cell therapies where actually you, you can give progenitor cells and then uh, this progenitor cells actually can multiply into actual functioning liver cells or kidney cells and all those things. Again that research is going on that does not come into routine clinical practice. Some areas they have been but not to liver as such stem cell therapy has not yet come, but there are a lot of research happening. Yes, that in has those potential, areas. that has mm -hmm. potential. Mm -hmm. uh, quickly Runu, you can yes. uh, when you are yes, so we are a lot of queries and questions, uh, I'll come back, back, back. we are in very short of time, but still I just wanted to uh, talk about, you just uh, shared the figure that organ donation pledge have increased, right? So, I just wanted to know how much of them have actually come in numbers. Okay. So, as I said, you know, the in the last bit of my presentation, so it is important for people to pledge and uh, register themselves being organ donor. Right. Okay. So, that is the first step towards actually uh, this actually leading into actual organ donation. Hmm. Okay. Because uh, you can see, you know, even in West, it is 30 per million. Okay. Hmm. So, it is not, million uh, uh, Spain, so yes. it's not like everyone is going to. Uh, yes. Okay. No, but this number you told about the donation, actual donation, actual is donation. Place or pledges? Pledges actually I said last year I think what I remember from NOTO Only is they have crossed 90,000 plus yes, okay. pledges which is a huge number for the right. country because if that happens then the then actually what is happening that, that just shows that people are understanding what is organ donation, hmm. they want to do it and the most important part of this is that it becomes easier for relatives to take the decision when this unfortunate, you know, uh, so something it, unfortunate happened to yes, you near India. Yeah. So, that is most more important about being played. And uh, I am sure because, uh, you know, this are small steps towards a bigger goal. So, if pledges increases, then we are going yes. to see the increase in number of organ donation, yes. which actually last year they were about nearly about 1000 donation has happened in country. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, 1000 or, on donations organ donations for the organ donation. Organ donation. But you are excluding cornea at this time. No, no, we are not including cornea. Cornea, yes. Because cornea that number is much more. Uh, cornea actually to my knowledge, I am not an expert, I expert, mm -hmm. but I think you know, my whatever I know, I think we have surplus corneas in the country. Yes, yes, because yes. Because that is yes, how know. the momentum yes, gains. Yes, you yes. know, the eye donation 20 years ago, there was so big campaigns and then suddenly there was right. a momentum in eye donation. Yes. And uh, I, I think now we have surplus cornea. Surplus cornea, yes, I know. I know. Mm -hmm. so, yes, right. so as far as this concerned, very interesting viewers, uh, you recall that when we Partha Mukhopadhyay came here in the RD this year, I mean in April 20, May 2023, uh, less than a year ago, we talked about the uterus donation as well, hmm. particularly in connection with the male pregnancy. Uh, I mean, those are hot, to hot topics, but sapne ki baat hai, par sapne hum zarur dekhte hai. Mm -hmm. he, he donation kiya. Now, coming back to this point, the donation which Renu raised, uh, you also mentioned a lot about the family and the person concerned. Uh, aisa aksar mene dekha hai ki member, family member, jo person hai, usne to donation kiya hai. Lekin family members, because of their religious or some other point, whatsoever the reason, they are not willing to donate. Then legal position kya hai, kis ki chalegi, person himself or the family members? So, this is, this is I think, uh, this is a tricky issue yes. and uh, I know where you are coming from. So, basically there are countries in Europe where they have opt-in and opt-out uh, system, where if somebody has expressed their willingness to donate and uh, they have donor card, then uh, the then authorities actually take it that their decision is final. 
but I think that that comes with lot of um, this one. I I don't really agree on that because at the end of the day, it, this decision has to be in conjecture with the family agreeing oh, oh, that I they see. want to oh. donate uh, this one because uh, the way our culture is and uh, we need to have our own this one and uh, although somebody has expressed their wish by having an organ donor card or having registered themselves but i don't think we should go ahead without family's wishes oh, I see. So, so family uh, should be in full agreement oh, and uh, this is the legal position as on today uh, as on in today uh, uh, as on today uh, i this is what it is that uh, the family has to agree because you can imagine you know we, we because we had seen many many problems arising uh, with the family uh, members uh, at uh, the end of the day uh, so the last thing you want you don't want to have you know this is a donation this is a daan and daan has to come you know it you can't have people who are unhappy about something i understand I it should be uh, done very quickly i am coming to See, no, so you can't have those. Yes, I understand. Very quickly, sir, we are running short of time. Sorry, but uh, very quickly, I want to come to this point. Uh, one of my colleague uh, has made this uh, question: the liver psoriasis. Mm -hmm. You you are dealing with this liver psoriasis a lot. I know. I mean, the person is suffering from liver psoriasis. Can he? I mean, this question uh, comes in one way or the other in our periphery several times. If koi bimar hai, ab uske kitne organs donate kiya ja sakte hain? पर्टिकुलरली मेटास्टिस जब फैल जाते हैं तो लिवर सोराइसिस के केस में क्या कुछ ऑर्गन डोनेट किया जा सकता है आई हैव सीन द पीपल डोनेटिंग बॉडी द होल बॉडी फॉर एकेडमिक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू लार्जली बट इज दैट रियली बेनिफिशियल फॉर मेडिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एज वेल सो देह दान की जहाँ तक बात है देह दान मतलब कि वो मृत्यु हो गई है देन दे वॉन्ट टू डोनेट देयर बॉडी सो दोज बॉडीज आर यूज इन मेडिकल कॉलेज फॉर टीचिंग पर्पज आई थिंक दैट्स एन इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट बिकॉज जो एनाटमिकल टीचिंग है वो बॉडीज पे होती हैं तो देह दान भी एक बहुत बड़ा दान है और उससे जो हमारे विद्यार्थी पढ़ेंगे तो वो सारा उसी से कमिंग टू सिरोसिस एंड ऑर्गन डोनेशन सो सिरोसिस एक्चुअली इट्स नॉट ए काउंटर इंडिकेशन इफ अगर उनका बाकी चीज़ें प्रिजर्व है किडनी अगर ठीक है उनकी तो वो किडनी डोनेट कर सकते हैं does it really happen matlab it is rarity it is rarity because most cirrhosis will have some kidney but it is not uncommon ऐसा भी नहीं कि नहीं हो सकता है वो किडनी डोनेट कर सकते हैं वो अभी आजकल हैंड डोनेशन वगैरह yes, का हैंड डोनेशन यस तो दे कैन स्टिल डोनेट टिश्यूज ओके टिश्यू जो है बॉडी टिश्यू स्किन बोन वगैरह हैं अगर वो टिश्यू डोनेट करना चाहते हैं तो वो कर सकते हैं डोनेट वन लास्ट क्वेश्चन सर अगेन हाउ मेनी हॉस्पिटल्स इन दिस कंट्री टर्शरी हॉस्पिटल्स ऑफकोर्स ऑल दीज हॉस्पिटल्स वुड बी टर्शरी हॉस्पिटल्स आर एबल टू डू दिस ट्रांसप्लांटेशन पर्टिकुलरली इन दहली फॉर एग्जाम्पल so in delhi i would have thought liver wise there are about 20 centers who are doing transplant in delhi and ncr delhi and ncr okay. and uh, so if we take pan india there will be at least more than you know if we take kidney and all there will be many centers actually kidneys are now happening district place pe bhi kidney transplant hota hai yes yes so yes, kidney yes. transplant ke kaafi hai aur liver transplant second tier cities like indore baaki jagah pe they are able to do it ha and they wahan pe ho rahe hain I know, हाँ, I know, I know this Vijayawada and Shaka हाँ, Patna. हो रहे हैं, हो रहे हैं. तो आजकल ऐसा नहीं है. और अभी जो current government ने जैसे जिस तरह से infrastructure expand किया है, और जो क्योंकि main चीजें होती हैं कि infrastructure इन इन तरह के operation करने के लिए you need a proper infrastructure and all those things. तो उससे काफी सारा expansion हुआ है. हम खुद अभी जैसे जोधपुर जाके हमने पांच transplant वहाँ किए. Oh great, तो great. Doctor Sabha. Aims Jodhpur में किए हैं वो. I am sorry. That we are running out of time. I am sorry. Sir, no. Sir, in a very brief, uh, I just wanted to know: Can infant organs be used for adults? In yes or no? They can be. They can, can be. So, like, जो मैंने आपको case बताया था, दस महीने का, तो उनके जो kidney हैं, दोनों kidney, I think they gave it to a. चौदह बार एक चौदह महीने का चेक किया. हाँ. हाँ. तो they can be. Okay, it can.
तो बहुत सारे सवाल और प्रश्न अभी भी हमारे पास हैं लेकिन आई एम क्वाइट श्योर कि हमारे जितने भी व्यूवर्स हमारे साथ जुड़े इस पूरे सेशन से आपको काफ़ी कुछ जानने और सीखने को मिला और आपकी बहुत सारी क्वेरीज जिज्ञासा मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंटली जो मिथ्स थे वो आपके क्लियर हुए होंगे और उन सभी को आप जरूर ध्यान में रखें एंड सर अब हमें रैपअप करना पड़ेगा ये सेशन Yes, uh, colleagues. Uh, as I said in the beginning, that next we are going to have uh, Bharti Kakar from Indian Institute of uh, Geomagnetism, Mumbai, with us, and she will be talking about uh, geomagnetism. Look, uh, uh, our space में क्या क्या हो रहे हैं, क्या plasma है, उस plasma को समझने के लिए, plasma की प्रक्रियाओं को समझने के लिए हम geomagnetism बहुत चमकतों को किस तरह से उपयोग कर सकते हैं? और जिसमें कि हम मैग्नेटिक फील्ड रिवर्सल्स एट्सेट्रा एट्सेट्रा बात करेंगे तो आपसे अनुरोध है कि आप लोग हमारे साथ जुड़िए 19 फरवरी को अनदर एक्साइटिंग टॉपिक इन द एरिया ऑफ साइंस वेयर यू विल बी सीइंग लॉट ऑफ एक्साइटमेंट अबाउट आवर ओन प्लेनेट अर्थ विच आर नॉट नोन टू अस सो फार सो लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड मीटिंग यू ऑन नाइनटीन ऑफ फेबर नाइनटीन ऑफ जनवरी एंड ऑन फ्राइडे टेन ए अगेन थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सो वेरी मच पामेशा सर एंड गगन सर for this very insightful session thank you so very much sir thank you and big thanks and big salute to you sir or aapki team ko bhi and it's time for me to wrap up this session but before that let me share a very important piece of information with you all regarding our e content competition and cit ncrt is quite happy to announce the all india children's educational e content competition for this year 2023 24 as you can see on your television screens and if you are a teacher teacher educator student or independent educational e content creator we invite you to send in your best e content for the competition for more details and the registration form you can visit the activity section of our official website that is cit.ncert.gov.in or either you can scan this qr code or the last date for the sending of your entries is 20th january 2024 do remember it's 20th january 2024 and it's time for me to wrap up this uh, webinar series here only aur jaisa aapko sir ne bataya ki aap 19 january ko bhi hamare sath bane rahe aur ek aur webinar series ke sath hum aapke sath aayenge ek bahut hi important topic ke sath abhi filhal mujhe renu bhat ko de ijazat namaskar